Shipping accounts for at least 4% of all global carbon dioxide emissions. If shipping were a country, it would be the sixth largest emitter of greenhouse gases on the planet. And the sector is expected to grow by 75% in the next 15 years. I'm Oliver Steeds, and I've come to the Red Sea to explore a future where our shipping fleets may be powered directly by the sun. This extraordinary boat is Planet Solar, otherwise known as Turinor, a name taken from Tolkien's Lord of the Rings and meaning the power of the sun. We're going to join the crew and sail from here, Hukdada, up the Red Sea to Sharm el Sheikh. It's part of their bid to be the first to circumnavigate the planet with solar power alone. Backed by an entrepreneur from the solar industry, Planet Solar cost over $16 million to build and began its odyssey in Monaco back in December 2010. Traveling the seas to demonstrate what is possible with the solar technologies we already have and carry a simple positive message. We can change to protect our planet. Even though it's a boat of the future, some traditions do remain. First, we had to present ourselves to the captain, Erwan Luruzic. Hello, Captain. Hi, how are you? Good. All right, so what's happening today? So what's happening? We spent the night, uh, the night at anchor here in the Shadwan Archipel, and we're going to uh, Eva Panker, proceed to Sharm el -Sher. We have the bosun, Jens ahead, ready to Eva Panker. OK, let's go. To maximize solar electricity production, outriggers with additional solar panels can be extended like wings. How many solar panels have you got? We have 800 modules. 38,000 cells. So when everything is open, we have more than 537 square meters of solar generator. It is the biggest solar boat in the world. And what power is, are all these cells generating? So uh, the total of uh, the solar generator, when everything is open, is 93 kilowatts of power. It's a little bit less than 130 horsepower. To put that in context, this is a 90-ton boat being driven by 130 horsepower, roughly the same as a motorbike engine. This extraordinary power-to-weight ratio is made possible because of the catamaran's sleek aerodynamic and hydrodynamic design. This cell is a sun power cell. It's one of the best cells that you can find on the market. Everybody can buy it, but it's 22.6 of efficiency. And uh, at the moment, the weather is very good, so we are probably uh, producing like, like uh, 120, 110 horsepower at the moment. Planet Solar's longest leg was over one month without any stops day and night, meaning they have to be able to recharge their batteries during the day so they can power on by night. It's a constant balance of power production versus power consumption. Christian is the engineer on board the boat, and we're going down here, quite a steep drop, into the hull to look at the engines. So this is a real nub of it. These are, what are these? Tell me, I yeah. don't know. <laughs> so we have two electric motors behind here and here. And uh, with this belt here, that's a gear, so the engines are turning 10 times um, faster than the main shaft, what is directly connected with the propeller, what is behind this wall you see over there. Can you start uh, the, the electric motors? Yes, you can. How fast can you go? Maximum speed, we can go up to 10 knots. So quite fast when you think that it's all solar powered. And in average, on long navigation, we go four to five knots. And how does that compare to other uh, ships? Yeah, when you compare it to big cargo ships, they go faster. They go around 20, 12 to 16 knots. Uh, when you compare it to normal sailing boats around the same speed. Behind the steel door that Christian's opening up is the heart of the beast. This is the massive battery. It's one of the largest lithium batteries in the world. The problem is it's proprietary technology, and so we're not allowed to film it. And how much energy can you store in those batteries? Up to uh, one megawatt hour, what is around uh, 20,000 lights. Normal. How many days, how many hours of power does that give you then? And this gives us around three days of power of its normal navigation speed. It's not only the engines that are powered by solar generated electricity. So are the lights, computers, navigation systems, fridges and freezers, everything except the gas cooker. It is quite literally a floating solar power station and silent. 
On the surface, the bridge looks like any other. Computerized admiralty charts and autopilots, thrust controls for starboard and port side propellers, a steering wheel for manual control of the rudder. But there are a few subtle differences. So this is uh, our electronic management system where, uh, in which we have the battery level, 94%, all of them. Uh, as we are here for a few days, we have been able to load completely, maximum. Planet Solar has taken great leaps forward, not only in their power system, but also in their approach to navigation. So what's unique about the navigation of Planet Solar? We, we have to anticipate and navigate with the sun. Uh, so the first principle that, that we used was to stay as close as possible to the equator, because that's where you have more sun uh, in general. And uh, the second one is that in details, we, uh, we follow predictions and we anticipate the, the weather conditions uh, on site with uh, Meteo France, the French weather forecast that is sending us uh, weather predictions uh, every day, twice a day. Mm -hmm. And on these weather predictions, we have uh, the sunlight. So we can calculate, anticipate what will be our production of, of uh, energy for the next few days. It's a pioneering piece of software, purpose-built for Planet Solar, but already having application with the solar power industry, helping to predict the number of hours of sunshine per day, enabling them, for the first time, to project their production capacity. What is different about how you then navigate from A to B that another ship would then navigate A to B? Is your route more efficient? The, the, the major difference with, I would say, regular ships is that regular ships, they go from A to B, straight. We might pass by C or D or even by Z, depending on what are the conditions, uh, sun, wind, currents, waves are the most important elements. But of course, the major one is sun. So sometimes it's actually more efficient and faster, not just to go A to B, but to go A to C and then to B. Yes, exactly. Why don't people do that? It seems to make logical sense. If it's actually more efficient and quicker. Unfortunately, not all of them are uh, doing that way and they just don't bother and they go straight. Uh, but some companies realize that uh, you need to be a little bit more smart than just go straight A to B. Planet Solar hope their pioneering navigational software that improves travel times and subsequently fuel efficiency will be picked up by the shipping industry. There's some big visionary thinking going on here, but what's the actual application for the shipping industry? Oh, I think what we want to demonstrate for the shipping industry, it's we have the technologies to improve first the efficiency and then to use the renewable energies. And we can, with these two main uh, things, uh, increase the efficiency and to reduce the cost of atmosphere of uh, fossil fuel and also the CO2 emission. And what about the actual application of the solar technology? Can it be applied to shipping? Of course. It's not possible to uh, have every boat in this planet only on solar energy. But we think that uh, close of the equator, it's possible for more than 60% of the boat, like a fishing boat, diving boat, to be only on solar energies.